Hey, what's up guys? Cliff Prawn here in Cape Town, South Africa, author of Social Marketing, was Amazon.com's bestseller, second bestseller in my category the very first day. So I'm super excited, changes day by day, but thanks for going out there and supporting the book. You know, I think what you're gonna find in my book and also in this video is how to make a lot of money in sales and marketing without becoming that cheesy sales guy. You know, I never wanted to be a member of the NFL, but I saw network marketing and I saw how much money you could make in it and I got excited about it but I wasn't sure exactly what to do. And so today we're gonna to talk about five steps, five key things that are really gonna make a big difference in your business. So what I want you to do, get a pen and paper, put on your mental track shoes, because we're gonna move really fast and we're gonna start right now with section one, how cool is this? I don't think anybody's ever done this before. A chalkboard with trash bags. You wouldn't believe how long it took to set all this stuff up. But we're gonna get started right away. You know, when I first got into sales and marketing when I was 19 years old, I met a rich guy who made a million dollars a month and he basically just told me how the world works. And I think before you get into all the techniques and tips and tricks, it's important to have a general understanding of like how the world works. And if you really look at it, you've got 3% of the people making all the money. You know, if you go to the grocery store and you look in the parking lot, how many Lamborghinis and Ferraris do you see? Probably not very many. And so I think we'd all agree you got about 3% of the people that are making all the money. And then 97% of people, they're gonna do okay. They're gonna have a house and maybe a dog and maybe a wife, but money's always gonna be an issue. Money's always gonna be a problem. And if you think about it, how many times a day do you think about money? Is it once a day? Twice a day, they say the average person, it's something like a thousand times a day. That's freaking ridiculous, okay? So when you look at social marketing, it's such an amazing opportunity, but the first thing you gotta understand is that in the world, there's a very small percentage of people that are gonna make all the money. Now, why is that? What my mentor shared with me 17 years ago is because most people are gonna have a job and so they're always gonna make a living and they're always gonna get by. And when you have a job, you can always get by, but it's hard to get ahead, obviously, 3% of people are gonna make the big money and that's where we wanna be, but why don't we get there? It's because the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. If you don't have money to start a business, you're always stuck working for somebody else to have the money to start the business. And so really, if you look here, what's happening is the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And I think that's totally unfair and I'm sure you do too. So when I was 19 years old, back in 1996, uh, my mentor taught me how to recruit and train salespeople. And he said, if you can recruit and train a big sales force, you'll make a little percentage off everything they do, and then you can make big money. You know, J. Paul Getty, at one point, was one of the richest people in the world. I think he was the richest man in the world. And he said, I'd rather have 1% of 100 people's efforts rather than 100% of my own. Because then you're making 100%, but you've got all the free time. So I think before we get into like the techniques and all that kind of stuff, it's so important to just understand how the world works and to really appreciate what it is you have, you know, have the attitude of gratitude because if you look at like way back when, I mean, people were born into their class and you look at in 2013, there was more millionaires created than any other year in history. And so when the economy fell apart, it pushed a lot of people out of their jobs. And so everyone's like, oh no, but at the same time, it created a lot of entrepreneurs. And so while the middle class is getting smaller and smaller, we're also seeing a lot more entrepreneurs. I mean, check out that guy that just sold WhatsApp to Facebook for $19 billion. I think he had just recently applied to Twitter like four years ago and gotten turned down. So while a lot of people are getting displaced from their jobs, that's also creating a lot of opportunity. So let's move along here to section two. This is so cool, I'm so excited. Okay, here we go. You know, I've been in network marketing since I was 19 years old and I've made over $10 million doing it. I've bought two Lamborghinis, a Ferrari, a twin turbo Porsche. I live next door to Britney Spears. I mean, I've traveled to 33 different countries. I've literally done everything I've ever wanted to do and I never became that cheesy salesperson. But I think like, I just became such a nerd. You know, it's like I listened to everybody and I see a lot of new people go through this. They go, man, is it all about technique? Is it all about sales and marketing? Or is it all about like Bob Proctor talks about the law of attraction, what you think about, you bring about. Do I have to work on myself or do I work on sales? And the answer is both. But really my personal philosophy, when my reps come to me and they're struggling and they're like, man, Cliff, what does it take? I think it's 80% on the inside and I think it's 20% the skills. So obviously you're going to have to work on both. Okay. Now the 80%, 
That's your emotional, your spiritual, and your mental. And that's when we always talk about listen to personal development and really like work, you know, Jim Rohn says something that's really cool. He says, success isn't something you chase, it's something you attract by the person you become. If you want more, you have to become more. And that's so true. And so that 80%, you're gonna get it from Jim Rohn, you're gonna get it from Tony Robbins, from Bob Proctor, from Eric Thomas, he's like everybody's favorite. I mean, the guy's got so much passion. This is the kind of stuff that you've got to work on. And I remember like when I was 19 years old and I was working at a video arcade center and I was a broke college kid, I was like, oh, stuff that, dude. I don't want to work on any of that stuff. Just show me how to make money. And that's why you're never going to make any money because it's truly, it all starts on the inside. You know, it's kind of like looking at a mirror and you want the mirror to change, but you're not ready to change. It's going to take a radical change on the inside before you see any kind of real substantial change on the outside. So the 20% skill, you know, there's some people that cross over into both. Jordan Belfort's really good, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street. I watch a lot of his YouTube videos, and the guy's amazing. And he talks about how, like, within 1 24th of a second, somebody already knows if they want to work with you or not. And he says, then you've got four seconds to fix it. And right off the bat, when somebody looks at you, they already know if they want to work with you or if they want to date you or if they want to follow you. And that's based on your posture and your presence. Now you've got four seconds to fix it. And in that four seconds, you're basically going to use your tonality and your words. So obviously, there are some tips and tricks, what to say and what not to say. And we have to learn those things. But these things won't mean anything if you don't get in the right mental mindset first, okay? So I think this is all really important. If we move along to number three, let's talk about the brand new person. Okay, these are three things that the brand new person's got to know. Um, you can't just get all excited. You know, so many of you guys, you go to a meeting, you go to a seminar, you read a book, and you're like, I'm pumped. And you know, whatever your company's name is, you're like, oh yeah, you know, XYZ company for life, yeah! And then like a week later, you're freaking gone. It's like, what happened to that guy? So you got to get pumped up, but you also got to know what to do. So let's talk about a few basics here. Now, three things every new person has to know how to do. Obviously, you're going to have to get good at inviting. That's like a main part about our business. What cracks me up is, this is where a lot of people go wrong. So many people talk about the vehicle and they talk about the journey and what you should really be talking about is the destination. So I want you guys to think about like a shampoo commercial. You know, you see a shampoo commercial, the woman doesn't come out and talk about the scientist who made the drink. She doesn't come out and talk about all the ingredients and the active chemicals and no. What does a, a, a shampoo commercial look like? A girl comes out there and they have just like 20% like logic, 80% emotion. There's just a few things in there like about the ingredients and then the girl goes, Oh, and my hair's never been more manageable. And she takes everything in her, in her um, shower and she throws it all away and she's like, now I just need this. They're always selling results, but you guys get into this business and you're like telling everybody about your product and you're telling everybody about the company and those are all great things, but that doesn't move people. What moves people is emotion. So I want you to think like, if I was gonna try to convince you to take time off of work and come to Disneyland with me, I wouldn't call you up and be like, dude, bro, you gotta, you gotta come to Disneyland with me, man. My car has four tires and there's a seat for me and there's a, there's a seat for you too. And I've even got a radio and I just got the AC kicking, man. It's working like you wouldn't believe. Sounds stupid, right? That's how dumb you guys sound when you're talking about your product and your company. You see, nobody really cares about your product and your company, but what everybody cares about is themselves and their financial future. And so if you look at the difference between like the real pros, they say amateurs convince professionals sort. Too many of you guys are too desperate and you've got like fill in your company name vomit. I mean, you just like, it's like if you're trying to catch like a, a duck, you would just give them a little piece of bread, a little piece of bread and get them to follow you. But you guys take the whole loaf of bread and you throw it at them. So don't talk about the vehicle. Don't talk about the journey. What you want to do is talk about the destination. You see, you always talk about results. Sell the sizzle, not the steak. It's just that we're so like excited and we're so naive to marketing. We're like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Let me tell you all about this. But what's funny is like when you went to the presentation, you saw a whole bunch of stuff but you also saw a whole bunch of people that were excited about it and you felt the energy and you can't give that to somebody right off the bat. And so when you're inviting someone, don't say too much. It's the biggest mistake new people make. All you wanna do is talk to them about what it is that they want in life and what, where it is that they wanna go and don't give them all the details. I'll tell you more about that in a second, okay? But the other thing you gotta do is you gotta learn how to handle objections. And for this, I'm gonna pull in my good friend Craig, our resident artist who drew all this cool stuff. 
And the thing about objections is it's really not what you say. It's a lot more about how you say it, okay? So watch, here's some common objections, okay? Here, let's just start with the pyramid one because that's the one everybody gets. So Craig says to me, hey, is that a pyramid? Okay, say to me, hey, is that a pyramid? Hey, is that a pyramid? No, it's a triangle. You see, it doesn't matter what you say. What matters is this. What matters is that your energy never changes, okay? Say to me, hey, I tried that drink and it tastes like crap. Hey, I tried that drink and it tastes like crap. Yeah, you probably drank it wrong. Okay. <laughs> you see, it doesn't bother me. I don't let it bother me, right? Okay, say to me, that drink tastes like crap. That drink tastes like crap. Well, it's not a pizza. <laughs> you see, it doesn't matter. Your energy can't change. Say to me, hey, are you still doing that scam thing? Hey, you're still doing that scam thing? Hurtful. Just hurtful, Craig. I'm sorry. You see, if you guys can't be strong and you don't want to be a dick, then you can, you can take a whole nother approach. I love that one. When somebody's like all mean and nasty, now here's another really good one, is just be totally serious. If you say, hey, are you still scamming people with that whatever thing? Are you still scamming people with that thing? Seriously, I can't believe you just said that to me. It gets awkward, huh? It gets kind of serious. Now the first time you do it and somebody apologizes, you're gonna be like, dude, I can't believe that worked. But it's so funny that your friends aren't afraid to like push you and then we just get all weak in the knees and freak out and kind of, ah. And it's like, you've got to be willing to take a stand on this. I mean, it's like they just called your baby ugly and you're going to sit down and just take it and be like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe you're right. I mean, it's like, God. You know, one of the things my mentor taught me is, I'm going to show you guys something. So one of the things my mentor taught me in the very beginning is he said, you've got the 80% and the 20%. Uh, you got 80% ducks. <laughs> cute little ducky, okay? And you got 20% eagles. And you've got to learn to pet the ducks and push the eagles. But when you're out there talking to your friends, you just got to understand that eight out of 10 of them are ducks. Now, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not saying your friends are bad people. You know, some ducks have names like mom and brother and sister. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means that they're probably going to stay, you know, there's like, like that, that kind of average group. And life is easy for average people that never want to go anywhere. But as soon as you decide that you want to step up and step out, you're going to cause a little bit of friction between you and your friends. And that's okay. You know, when Justin Timberlake wanted to leave in sync and do his own thing, I'm sure there were some pretty heavy arguments. I'm sure there were some heated discussions. But if you want to step up and you want to step out, and that's all what we want to do, we want to be in the 20%. We want to be in the 3%. Heck, we want to be in the 1%. But when you go out there and you talk to your friends, Understand, you're gonna talk to some ducks. And so if you talk to 10 people and eight say no, but two say yes, dude, you're freaking money. But the problem is in school, we were always taught 70% to C, 80% a B, 90% an A. In this business, you get eight no's. You talk to 10 people and eight of them don't want whatever it is you're doing, and two of them say yes. Well, if your two people talk to 10 and eight say no, but two say yes, all of a sudden, you're starting to hit some exponential growth. So. One of the big things is you can't get too bummed out when the ducks aren't into it. Because if you look at the life of a duck, the ducks all kind of hang out together and they, they really waddle around in, you know, in their own shit. And they, they waddle around and all they do is they go quack, 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 quack. Have you ever heard a bunch of ducks together? Quack, 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 quack. It's like you can't even understand who's saying what. I mean, they're all just like arguing. Have you ever noticed it's your brokest friend that's like the best arguer? So I heard a great saying. They said, never argue with a fool because from a distance, it's hard to tell who's who. And so here's my advice to you guys. I think the reason why I've lasted 17 years in this business and the reason why I've made as much money as I have is because I'm kind of like water going down a stream. If I hit a rock, I just take the path of least resistance and I go around it. Amateurs convince professionals sort. Don't try to convince people, don't beg people. If somebody's not into it, move on. 90% of recruiting is timing. You can't say the right thing to the wrong person and vice versa. So you just gotta get out there and it's a numbers game. I mean, it's all math. I'm gonna do my next video. I'm gonna dress up like, like, a, like a math teacher, like a nerd, and I'm gonna talk about how this whole business is freaking math. If you talk to enough people, you're gonna find the right people, okay? So we talked just real quickly, a little bit about inviting, a little bit about objections. I'm gonna bring Craig in here for one more demo. You guys are going to love this, okay? Craig, come on over here. Um, when you guys are answering objections, 
There's a great book called How to Win Friends and Influence People, and they say nobody ever wins an argument because even when you win, you lose because the person goes home hating you. And so when people give me objections, I've got to realize that I've got to play with kid gloves because if I make the person feel stupid, maybe I win, but then they go post something on the internet about how my company or me is stupid. And so here's a little demonstration. If somebody comes at you with an objection, this is, this is how you want to handle it. Okay, his fist represents the objection, and I'm going to show you how to handle it. No, no, no. <laughs> you see, you don't want to make the guy feel dumb. So many of you guys, they come at you with an objection, and you're like, <laughs> and you make the guy feel stupid. He, he's never, that's like, like, okay, come back over here, Craig. That's like, if you, if you ask a girl out, and she's like, oh, no, I have a boyfriend, you don't start calling her names, because then later, when she's available, she's not going to think of you. You know, if so, so a girl says, oh, you know, I can't, I've got a boyfriend. You go, of course you do. Look how gorgeous you are. And then you just pretend to be your friend. And then you're really just a great white shark under the ice waiting for it to break. You know, it's the same here. The company that you're working for doesn't pay you to argue with your friends. And so be nice to people, be chill, handle the objections, stand up for yourself when you need to, but don't push people around, okay? Other objections people might give you. Um, give me any objection. I haven't got time, so I that one. Okay, if he says I haven't got time, I want you to think about this. What he's really saying is he's not making enough money. Because, so you don't have time, so you're so busy working. So they're obviously not paying him enough because he has to work so much to pay his bills. But you can't just come at him and say, oh, well, you're not making enough money. You know, you can't argue with people. It takes a little bit of finesse. And I'll do another video and I'll totally explain how to cover it. But if somebody says to me, you know, I don't have the time, then what I might say is, you know, the reasons people give of why they can't do it are usually the reasons of why they should do it. Another really good one is feel felt found. You know, I know exactly how you feel. I felt the same way. But what I found was I've actually got like three hours a day. They say the average person has three hours a day spare time. It's just that I was spending it watching TV and gossiping about my friends and, you know, on Tinder looking up trying to find chicks, okay? So if you guys want to do this business, it's going to take a little bit of sacrifice. And the thing about objections, we're going to go into it more in another video, but the thing about objections is that your energy doesn't change. You know, if he doesn't agree with it, say to me like, oh, that thing's stupid, it'll never work. Oh, that's stupid, it'll never work. I know, I've always hated your girlfriend, but I never told you. <laughs> I mean, it's like, dude, check out my energy. Have fun with this. If you guys aren't doing it, if you're, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. You know, it's like, well, dude, you wore an orange shirt. I wore a black shirt. I didn't go post something up on the internet about how stupid your orange shirt was. Like, some people aren't going to do it, and that's okay. And that's actually kind of noble, because maybe he's going to become a doctor or an attorney. I mean, what if everybody got involved with social marketing, and everybody got rich, and then your wife had a baby, and she's in the hospital, and the baby just falls on the ground because there's no doctor to deliver it? What if you went to your favorite restaurant, and there's nobody at the restaurant because everybody got rich in social marketing, and now nobody wants to work at the restaurant? So you have to understand that like a lot of people aren't going to do it, and that's okay. And you want to make sure you're not pitching the wrong people. And so before I really pitch someone, I kind of like ask some questions and get to know them and see if it's even the right person that I want to be working with. So awesome, Craig. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. So let's move into the third category here. You've got to get good at edifying. Okay. I remember my mentor said to me, the better you talk about me, the more money you'll make. And that like kind of always stuck in my head. Now the key to edification is you can't ramble and you can't repeat yourself. You've just got to say a couple nice things about the person and then you got to chill or it looks like you're selling. When it, just remember like in general with everything, the more you say, the weaker you sound. The less you say, the stronger you come across, okay? So with edification, you just want to have one or two key points about the person. Now, before you edify, it's really important to know what personality type your prospect is. And there's four major personality types. Like the psychological or the clinical terms would be controller, promoter, analyzer, supporter. I like to call it shark, dolphin, urchin, whale, because most of us think in pictures, and this is kind of a nice picture. So you got the shark and the dolphin on top, and, and they make decisions quickly, and they think quickly. And then you've got the urchin and the whale at the bottom. Now, interesting, after a presentation, these people, you can push for a decision. These people, you can't. They've got to take time. They've got to think about it. Um, but we'll talk about that later. The shark and the whale, total opposites. 
Now there's good sharks and bad sharks, high class sharks and low class sharks. Shark doesn't mean good or bad. Shark just means they're goal oriented, they're money conscious, okay? Dolphins want to party. They're always wearing bright colors. You'll notice dolphins are always wearing fluorescent colors. Dolphins actually prefer the taste of Pepsi over Coke because Pepsi is a little sweeter. This personality type uses lots and lots of toilet paper. They're always running out of toilet paper. Then you got the urchin who's so analytical, they fold it into little squares, okay? Sharks are always wearing power colors like red, black, white. The whales are always wearing earth tones and whales are socially conscious. They like to hug a tree, cry at the sunset, drive a Subaru, save the world, okay? Subaru actually markets to these people. Companies like Jeep market to these people. Companies like Mercedes market to these people. And companies like Volvo will market to the analyzers or to the urchins. Now, it's important to know which personality your prospect is because as you're edifying whoever is going to be doing the presentation, you want to highlight certain parts of their personality. I'll give you an example of how you could do it wrong, okay? Let's say you're talking to your prospect and let's say your prospect is a whale and you're like, oh my gosh, you got to meet, you know, John Smith. He's freaking incredible. This guy makes so much money. He's got two Lamborghinis and his watch costs more than your face, right? Obviously, this whale person is going to be like, well, that guy's the devil. There's people starving in Ethiopia. So when you're edifying to somebody like that, Obviously, you want to highlight the characteristics that match that person. You see, generally, for people to say, I like you, they have to say, I am like you, okay? So you're going to highlight certain parts of the person's personality. So what you might say is something more like, hey, you know what? There's somebody I want to introduce you to. This guy's super successful, but he's got the biggest heart. He's such a caring person. He's really busy. Um, we're working on a new project together. I'm thinking about pulling you in on it. When are you free, Tuesday or Thursday? Now they're gonna ask you, what is it? And you say, you know what, I'm kind of in a hurry right now. I was just on my way out the door, but I thought about you. I'll tell you all about it on Tuesday or Thursday. Which one's better for you? Just keep control of the conversation. Remember, whoever's asking the questions is the person in control. And so you always wanna to learn to answer a question with a question. If I tell somebody, if I call somebody up and I'm like, hey man, you gotta check out what I'm doing. And they're like, cool, what is it? And I'll say, well, you know what? Let's meet up on Tuesday or Thursday. I'll tell you all about it. They say, you know what? I'm not going to come unless you tell me what it's all about. I'd be like, all right, dude, sorry. I don't have time right now. But if you change your mind, hey, let's chat later. Woo. Don't be afraid to let it go. You guys don't have to. You know what's funny is when you guys are inviting people, it's almost like, it's, it's almost like, like a girl. Okay, you see a pretty girl and you're like, oh, dude, that chick's so hot. And you just, you just want to go over and like hug her and kiss her so bad and like, and, and whatever. And you just see her and you just want that end result. You guys are the same when you're recruiting people. You see somebody and you just want to sign them up so bad, you move too fast and you scare the person off. So I want you guys to remember this. If you're taking notes, write this down. The slower you go, the further you get. A lot of times our ambition just comes across as weak or desperate or creepy and you just want to slow down. The slower you go, the further you get. So when you're edifying whoever's going to do the presentation for you, just remember that you want to take a look at the personality of your prospect and then you want to edify your upline highlighting certain parts of his personality that match with that person. Now if you're taking notes, write this down. Never give details. As soon as you give details, you lost. Because now the person's an expert, they think they know what it is. Oh, I've seen things like that before. That makes no sense whatsoever. My first girlfriend cheated on me, okay? But it's like, I don't look at a girl today and be like, oh my gosh, she's just like the last one. I still date girls today. Well, I mean, I, I try to. So this isn't that and that isn't this. I mean, it's like, you can't just take everything from the past. You know, you gotta, you gotta let it go. So I think edification is such an important tool. Match the personalities. Don't talk for too long. I mean, I could talk about this forever. There's one more thing I wanna cover in this section before we move on, and I'm gonna use Craig again. Craig, you're so awesome. Come on over here, Mr. Volunteer. Um, check out this money objection. I learned this one from Matt Morrow. It's one of my favorites. Okay, now don't do this with strangers because you might get punched in the face. But with like, your, you, I mean, you know who to use it on and, and who not to. But let's say, Craig, you say to me, man, I really want to do it, but I don't have the money. Okay, that's what he's going to say. I really want to do it, but I don't have the money. Oh, dude, how does that feel? Oh, <laughs> I know it seems mean, right? But you know what's crazy? If your friend was driving drunk, you would take his keys. But so many of our friends are driving drunk through life and we just let him drive on. You know, it's like a really good friend of mine once said that he wanted to do it, but he didn't have the money. And I just asked him, I was like, dude, how long have you been working for? And he was like, uh, 15 years. 
And I said, bro, in 15 years, you haven't saved up 500 bucks or 200 bucks or whatever it is. It's like, obviously what you're doing isn't working. And, you know, people say, I have to think about it. Well, whatever you've been thinking about hasn't been working. Why don't you stop thinking and follow someone who is thinking because everything I do works. Now, I might not actually say that because like, I don't want to get my car keyed, yeah. but that's kind of like how I'm thinking. It's crazy to me that new people get started and you're so excited and you run into all these people that have objections and it starts to wear you down. That's why it's so important that you guys watch videos like this, read books like mine and everybody else's out there. Uh, because you know, you've got to stay fired up. You've got to stay pumped up. You're all like a cell phone and when you go out there and you talk to lots of people, the battery gets lower and lower and lower and pretty soon you talk to your next prospect and you're like, <sighs> You don't want to join, do you? Please, I'll pay for you. And it's so weak, okay? So you've got to stay excited. You've got to know what to do, but you've got to stay excited. So Craig, thanks again, man. You're freaking awesome. So, okay, I think we've covered this. I could go over it. I could give a weekend seminar on each one of these sections, but we want to try to keep this video as short as we can, get as much in as we can. So let's move on to section number four. I'm so excited. Bam. So many people say, I'm in it for the long haul. Oh God, I hear that all the time. I'm in it for the long haul. Think of it this way. If you signed up, let's say, 20 people, and you signed up one a month for 20 months, each person that you sign up feels lost and scared and alone and feels like they're the only person in your business, which in fact they probably are, okay? Or you take 20 people and you sign them up in like 30, 60, or 90 days. You see, you want to get people in fast because that's what creates momentum. It's almost like a feeding frenzy. And what happens is, you know, it's like, if let's say this is you, and let's say maybe you've got a left and a right. You want to put 10 over here and 10 over here. When I moved to Cape Town, South Africa a year and a half ago, I didn't know one single person, but I asked Clay Jackson, what do I do? And he told me to do this. Now I've got 4,500 people here. And I did that in less than a year. We've got massive momentum. We've got a big event coming up with Matt Morrow, over 1,000 people. Um, we've had some of the top leaders from America fly over here and everything's cranking. And it started with this. See, here's the problem. Every company is like a bucket and they all come standard with like a hole in them, okay? And you put somebody in and they fall out. How many of you guys have ever had that experience? Probably all of us, right? Okay. So if you keep putting them in one at a time, they keep falling out. Now there's two things you got to do. Number one, you put a whole bunch of people in real fast so it clogs up the hole. Now some people are still going to slip out, but you're going to really stop a lot of that attrition. Okay. The other thing you want to do is once somebody gets in the bucket, you want to work with them, you want to train them, you want to build a relationship with them. You know, they say that if you want a million dollar check, you've got to build million dollar relationships. We're building a business by building people. And if you spend time with that person and you work with that person and you get them to read the right books and listen to the audio tapes and go to the seminars, that person's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and they're going to be too big to fall out of that hole. But the key to this business is speed. You guys want to work fast. Now, this is something I learned from one of my mentors a long time ago, and I've been using it for years. There's three stages to momentum. The first stage is creating momentum, then you sustain momentum, and then you advance momentum. By far, the hardest part is creating momentum. That's the most self-reevaluating, like challenging, like I'm totally gonna quit. I mean, it's the hardest part, okay? Creating momentum is done with enthusiasm. Now during that create momentum stage, you're not always gonna be able to work like this, but you're gonna take every phone call. You order a pizza, you pick it up, you have the first bite, oh, it's so good, and your hands are greasy and the phone rings, and it's one of your sales reps. Dude, you put down the pizza, wash off your hands, and you pick up the phone. Because if you say, oh, I'm gonna call him back later, guess what, right now, that guy's in the mood to talk, or that girl's in the mood to talk. Later, you're done eating pizza, you call them, they just got their pizza. Now, who's more dedicated, you or maybe that brand new person that just kind of got started? And so in the beginning, during that create momentum stage, you, you drive, someone says, dude, I need a meeting across town. You freaking go do it. You literally work eight to faint. You're gonna pour everything you've got into making it happen during that create momentum stage. And you wanna understand that that's kind of like first gear. Now, you're not gonna stay in first gear forever or what? you're gonna burn out. 
but too many people switch out of first gear too soon they switch into second gear now what happens if you're driving your car okay after my Lamborghini is like I, I got into Ferrari for a while and like if you shift too soon then the engine bogs and it slows down and it dies it's the exact same with your organization so you've got to know when to switch so during that creating momentum stage you do that with enthusiasm and the last four letters of the word enthusiasm spell I am sold myself if you're not into it nobody else is going to be into it you see people aren't looking to see what you know about it they're really looking to see how you feel about it so remember that stage could take you a month it could take you six months for some people it takes them a year but how do you know when you're done well when you've got momentum and people are signing up like crazy and you can't possibly drive all over the place and deliver that many packages or do that many meetings then you know it's time to shift into second gear now second gear is sustaining momentum now you do that with an organized system and that's really nothing more than a schedule you know people ask me all the time I get like crazy emails hey Cliff what's the best system I don't personally really believe in systems I believe in leadership and I believe in duplicating leaders you know one leader can lead a group and then you duplicate and you create another leader and then he can lead a group I mean a system to me is really nothing more than like an organized schedule and a hierarchy of like who to call and who's doing what it's just being organized and so this second step right here is basically I can't keep driving around doing so many meetings where I'm gonna lose my mind that's when you know you're ready to shift and that's when you create a schedule the schedule that I've used over the years that's always worked well for me is Tuesday meeting Thursday meeting Saturday training the reason I spread it out like that is I don't want to be like Monday Tuesday Wednesday meeting because then they've got like Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday where they're on the emotional roller coaster I like to make sure that every 48 hours they've got some kind of interaction with me or something you know company related to keep their energy up I almost look at it like a beach ball you've got to keep that energy in the air and as soon as it hits the ground then freaking you lost okay so this is really nothing more than a schedule and how do you advance momentum how do you shift into third gear is it's all through training and duplication nobody builds a big team you know the biggest team that I built was 67,000 people and I did that when I was 23 years old along with the help of a lot of great people the other thing is nobody does it by themselves okay but the reason we were able to build a team that big and really really fast was through training and duplication and so you know if you look at it the presentation is really kind of like the sales part of our business but our business really takes off in the training and the leadership and the mentorship and in the building relationships you know you've probably heard all the sayings nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care and I remember one of the pitfalls for me in the beginning was like I wanted my whole team to be just good-looking cool people and I wasn't working with everybody else and that's such a small percentage of the population and so if you have that limiting belief that your team has to be good-looking cool people that's freaking ridiculous okay what makes somebody attractive people follow people that know where they're going that's what makes somebody attractive when they have conviction certainty and enthusiasm that's what makes people attractive haven't you ever seen a guy that was like not the coolest looking dude you know he looks kind of like and he's got this super hot chick it's because he probably has purpose knows where he's going clarity conviction confidence those are the really attractive traits that you want to possess to get people to follow you so those are the three stages of momentum create sustain advance we're gonna move along over here to section five and last but not least our final and probably most important section which is being coachable okay now this is something really cool that I was shown like when I first got started my mentor basically told me he learned this from a, a guy named Mr. Shung who was like the largest cigarette manufacturer in China and he said there's four types of people out there and he said you've got stupid people which are people that make mistakes over and over again and they never learn from them they just keep making the same mistakes these are people on drugs people in gangs no offense gangbangers or drug addicts okay but it's that they keep making the same mistakes in their life repeatedly and they don't learn from it okay so these are the stupid people and that's a big part of the population then you've got smart people now smart people you can see that they don't have any ears because you tell them don't put your hand on the stove but they've got to do it themselves first they've got to learn from their own mistakes okay and so they put them they go oh wow dang that sucks wow you're right I won't do that again because I'm smart okay those are the smart people big part of the population 
then you've got wise people and I think that I definitely fall into this category because when I took a look at most of my friends that were going to school, getting a degree, getting a job and then you know really not having that life that they dreamt about when they were a little kid and then I met a guy who was you know super rich and he was like let me show you a better way I just took a look and I was like wow okay this guy is really rich and, and he's doing it like this and everybody else that I know is struggling and they're telling me to go that way so I just like I don't have a degree but I have a degree in common sense I just did what the rich guy told me to do okay so wise is people that they don't have to make the mistakes they can learn from other people's mistakes or we call it OPE other people's experiences and that's really the category that you want to fall into especially when you're new and you're starting out in this business and last is genius no ears, big smile, they don't have to hear anything, they already know it. Now if you were in that category, you'd already know it, we'd all know it. And these aren't necessarily the people that make the most money, usually it's the people in this category here. So the point of me showing you guys this at the very, very end is you're going to read a lot of great books, you know, you're going to go to some seminars, you're going to hear audio books, you know, but it's so important that whoever you're working with remain coachable and you really want to work hard to deserve your upline's attention so many people complain and they become like a victim and they're like oh you know you know Cliff if you were my sponsor or if Eric Rory was my sponsor or if you know whatever it's like I've heard it all dude it's not your sponsor it's not your sideline it's not your company it's not your product trust me it's you okay I see so many people they quit one company only to go to the next company to the next company to the next company and nothing changes if nothing changes and so whenever you point the finger you know you've got three pointed back at yourself so read the books listen to the audio programs go to the seminars but just remember that your success is up to you you know I heard a great saying a long time ago they said a success has a thousand fathers but a failure is a bastard child just understand that this is up to you you know maybe you've heard the 10 most powerful two-letter words arranged if it is to be it is up to me so today just decide make a decision I'm gonna take charge of my life and I'm gonna make it happen because nobody's gonna do it for you I've had a lot of great coaches but nobody ever did it for me I had to go out there I had to learn the stuff I had to implement it and I had to make it happen I know you can do it I'm excited for you and I'm excited about you social marketing's Cliff Braun over and out I'll see you guys on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and I look forward to meeting you in person sometime soon. Hey, what's up guys? Cliff Prawn here in Cape Town, South Africa, author of Social Marketing, was Amazon.com's bestseller, second bestseller in my category the very first day. So I'm super excited, changes day by day, but thanks for going out there and supporting the book. You know, I think what you're gonna find in my book and also in this video is how to make a lot of money in sales and marketing without becoming that cheesy sales guy. You know, I never wanted to be a member of the NFL, but I saw network marketing and I saw how much money you could make in it and I got excited about it but I wasn't sure exactly what to do and so today we're gonna to talk about five steps, five key things that are really gonna make a big difference in your business. So what I want you to do, get a pen and paper, put on your mental track shoes because we're gonna move really fast and we're gonna start right now with section one, how cool is this? I don't think anybody's ever done this before. A chalkboard with trash bags. You wouldn't believe how long it took to set all this stuff up. But we're gonna get started right away. You know, when I first got into sales and marketing when I was 19 years old, I met a rich guy who made a million dollars a month and he basically just told me how the world works. And I think before you get into all the techniques and tips and tricks, it's important to have a general understanding of like how the world works. And if you really look at it, you've got 3% of the people making all the money. You know, if you go to the grocery store and you look in the parking lot, how many Lamborghinis and Ferraris do you see? Probably not very many. And so I think we'd all agree you got about 3% of the people that are making all the money. And then 97% of people, they're going to do okay. They're going to have a house and maybe a dog and maybe a wife. But money is always going to be an issue. Money is always going to be a problem. And if you think about it, how many times a day do you think about money? Is it once a day? twice a day they say the average person it's something like a thousand times a day that's freaking ridiculous okay so when you look at social marketing it's such an amazing opportunity but the first thing you got to understand is that in the world there's a very small percentage of people that are gonna make all the money now why is that what my mentor shared with me 17 years ago is because most people are gonna have a job and so they're always gonna make a living and they're always gonna get by and when you have a job you can always get by but it's hard to get ahead obviously 
3% of people are going to make the big money and that's where we want to be. But why don't we get there? It's because the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. If you don't have money to start a business, you're always stuck working for somebody else to have the money to start the business. And so really, if you look here, what's happening is the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And I think that's totally unfair and I'm sure you do too. So when I was 19 years old, back in 1996, uh, my mentor taught me how to recruit and train salespeople. And he said, if you can recruit and train a big sales force, you'll make a little percentage off everything they do, and then you can make big money. You know, J. Paul Getty, at one point, was one of the richest people in the world. I think he was the richest man in the world. And he said, I'd rather have 1% of 100 people's efforts rather than 100% of my own. Because then you're making 100%, but you've got all the free time. So I think before we get into like the techniques and all that kind of stuff, it's so important to just understand how the world works and to really appreciate what it is you have, you know, have the attitude of gratitude because if you look at like way back when, I mean people were born into their class and you look at in 2013 there was more millionaires created than any other year in history and so when the economy fell apart it pushed a lot of people out of their jobs and so everyone's like oh no but at the same time it created a lot of entrepreneurs and so while the middle class is getting smaller and smaller we're also seeing a lot more entrepreneurs I mean check out that guy that just sold WhatsApp to Facebook for 